Uh, good evening, everybody. Lovely to see so many people here. And we are delighted as the first item on our agenda of the first meeting of the new season, the autumn season of the LLA Trade Union Group. We are delighted to have Steve Walker of Squawk Box here to talk to us about Sharon Graham's leadership of Unite. As we all know, there's been a number of issues. And so we're very, very interested to hear what Steve has to say on this topic. So, Steve. Please go ahead. Our opponents, for want of a better word, are uh, trying to do what they can, as I understand it, to start suborning even the left-wing uh, unions, those that have been traditionally uh, led by the left, uh, is because it does matter, because I think everybody recognised that when Starmer destroyed the Labour Party, the next logical kind of arena for the movement to try to exert its influence and for the money to, to exercise their power um, you know, it was going to be those left-led unions and trying to make more of the unions left-led. And, you know, though we saw how the right's going to react to that in unison when, um, you know, the left won a, a big majority on the exec there. And uh, unfortunately, the right-wing uh, general secretary and her team have, have essentially mutinied against the democratic wishes of the members and refusing to cooperate with, uh, with the right, uh, with the left wing executive, even you know to the extent of smearing them in messages to the members and things like that. So, um, and allegedly as well having a, a, a hand in um, the campaign to uh, you know by um, Kirkley's council to get the president of the union uh, sacked from his job there and try and sideline him from that um to to try to resist the uh you know the numerically biggest union in the UK going uh, going left in its actions as well as in its executive um and sadly uh you know there are signs of similar things going on now in unite um obviously the you know this is my analysis the facts that I'll state here are the facts and then obviously my analysis coming out of that is is analysis so people are, are perfectly free to challenge that if they want to um, but you know, my my record opposing Sharon Graham um as far back as the uh general secretary election is, is you know is, is well known. It's a matter of record on Squawk Box for a long time now that you know I supported Howard Beckett and uh, I thought he was the only candidate in that contest that would stand up to the left, and I think I've been born out uh, stand up to the right, excuse me, and I think I've been born out in that. Um you know, but I think as well, you know, there's an element in which, uh, you know, if, if I don't think that Sharon Graham is, is fit to be in the position that she's in because I think she's she's also weak and evasive whenever she's challenged. And I think, you know, the, my impression is that she isn't used to being challenged a whole lot uh, and reacts in a kind of um, demagogic way uh, when she is and uh, tries to clamp down on any sort of dissent. But I think that weakness and evasiveness um, that I've seen when I've approached the union for comment on a variety of exposés uh, that I've run um, was seen even right back into the uh, the beginnings of the campaign uh, because, you know, the, she and Steve Turner routinely, as far as I can tell, dodged hustings, wouldn't take part in any kind of hustings where they might be put on show and compared with Howard. Um, and, uh, you know, as far as I understand from what i hear from other people he's been shamefully treated since you know since she won the uh won the job and there's a bit you know that's a bit of a pattern as well um you know but when i approached the union for comment on serious allegations that should be denied if they're deniable um i've had none uh i've had no direct denials uh to anything i've had no direct response really to anything that i've asked them what i do tend to get back is a string of um insults and smears against me personally uh and my motives for um doing some you know actual journalism uh to examine what she's what she's uh getting up to um that to me smells like you know the labor rights response and i think there are reasons that that um smell is there really um I think as well from the outset, Sharon's um, determination or declared determination that she was going to abdicate from Westminster politics was a betrayal of members. I think the idea that you can best serve the interests of your members without being um, involved in 
Westminster politics and trying to uh, gain your influence and dominate that arena is is ludicrous. Um, working people have been under the cosh of a variety of uh, draconian and unjust laws for decades now. And uh, if you're not trying to fight that, then you are not doing the job properly. Um, so that was one of the biggest reasons at the time that I couldn't back her um, or Steve Turner because I didn't think that Steve was going to do it either. Um, and since she's taken the job, she's essentially got cosier and cosier with Keir Starmer and has given him free reign um, to pretty much do whatever he wants with the occasional soundbite thrown out for the sake of appearances, as far as I can tell, um, about, oh, he's got to do this and Labour must do better and so on. But, you know, despite funding going down from many of the unions to the Labour Party because of the conduct of the regime there, um, Unite's funding has gone up. Um, I was also very concerned at the uh, time during the uh, GS election that um, when there was debate about whether any candidate would stand down so that there could be a united left front against uh, Gerard Coyne, uh, the Labour first disgraced right winger, I must say, who uh, had um, wantonly breached date the laws and even admitted it um, and thought it was all right to do so uh, during the campaign when he tried to take the, the job from Len McCluskey. Um, but uh, just lost my place in my notes there. Sorry. Oh, yeah. So when uh, there was talk about that, she didn't just say that she wouldn't be um, stepping down at the comp uh, the uh, contest, but quoted Thatcher word for word uh, in saying the lady is not for standing down, which, you know, for somebody who's supposedly a left winger um, struck me as, as being very um, odd to say the least. Um, she's had nothing to say as far as I can tell about Starmer's, um, and his team's increasing coziness with the notorious union buster Rupert Murdoch. Um, again, that seems to be trail of the movement. And even the AWL, who um, backed her during the general secretary campaign not too long afterwards, said that uh, they regretted doing that and considered it to be a dishonest demagogue. And I don't agree with the AWL on the whole amount, but I have to say that, uh, you know, I think they uh, they called that one correctly. Um, demagogue, I think, is applicable because I think that she won um, the election largely through the efforts of uh, her network of paid organisers. She uh, has worked um, pretty diligently, as far as I can tell, to um, dominate the uh, kind of workplace branches, um, for which reason, you know, my what I hear from within United Community is that she's got the knives out for them because not having workplace branches in the United community, they're, they're not, they're outside of her control and she doesn't like that. Um, this increasing coziness with Starmer has continued even while Starmer has been, uh, and his cronies have been avidly blocking every Unite backed candidate that they can find. Um, when the United has nominated somebody, they've been uh, pretty much excluded from the shortlist. And yet she still allowed him uh, a platform to lie to members at the Unite Conference and make them promises about uh, overturning anti-union laws and other things like that, that uh, he promptly U-turned on, if I remember rightly, within a couple of days of, <laughs> of having made that speech to, uh, to Unite delegates. And, um, you know, there are other elements. I think, you know, there is... I don't know, like ego strikes me as being an issue. Um, I think that's an issue whether it's male or female in the role. I think we we have far too many people who are ego driven. Um, but you know, my, the reports I got from inside Unite said that when the enough is enough was the big deal in town. I mean, this the wind has gone out of the sails of that a little bit, as far as I can tell. Uh, but when that was the show, um, she banned the use of um, of the enough is enough phrase on anything from Unite. Uh, as I understand it from the uh, sources I have in the union. Um, and they said, and I can only go by what they say, that this was because she didn't come up with it and she didn't want a phrase to be, uh, you know, in the mouth of Unite, so to speak, that that wasn't hers. Um, she's been accused of claiming credit for wins that she had nothing to do with, um, such as Portsmouth and uh, the Queen's University in Belfast. She claimed the credit for the strike pay uplift um, that had been put in place long before by Len McCluskey when he was the general secretary. 
And then as we go along in this kind of relatively chronological um, analysis of why I don't think she's fit uh, for the job that she's in, um, things start to get a bit more serious. Uh, Brendan Ogle is is a, a legend in the Irish union movement for his work on a number of uh, different fronts. And he got very ill with a serious cancer, which happily he managed to uh, to defeat. But when he came back to work from that, despite cancer diagnosis being a protected, you know, a protected characteristic that entitles you uh, to protection under the law, um, allegedly as payback for not supporting Sharon, he was sidelined. And despite fighting it, and is, is currently now involved in legal action over it, uh, was pushed out to a you know what amounted to a branch branch office out of the way, and deprived of his responsibilities that he'd had previously. Uh, this provoked absolute outrage in Ireland. Um, the hospitality sector held uh, a special meeting and wrote to her about their outrage at uh, the way he'd been treated. Um, the community branch in Ireland um, did the same. Uh, the energy sector threatened to disaffiliate from the union entirely. Uh, Irish MPs condemned it. Um, and, and that triggered a, another show of weakness because rather than go to Ireland for the uh, to Dublin for the Irish conference, which she was scheduled to do, uh, and face the critics there, um, she instead cancelled the, uh, the visit at the last minute. And um, instead, the conference gave a standing ovation to Brendan Ogle when he got up and spoke instead. Um, when she eventually did go to Dublin about eight months later, uh, there were protests outside that venue by Unite Community members. And when Brendan's wife, uh, Mandy Lacombra, um, was you know vocal in her support for, for her husband, um, the uh, union, and I can't say who within the union, but the union um, began a smear campaign against her and started to... Uh, you know, put out snide little innuendos and so on uh, to to try to discredit her. Um, one of the major issues is is nepotism and the things that flow from nepotism. Um, it's not widely known that uh, Jack Clark, who works in Sharon's office, is her husband. They use uh, different surnames, but um, he was appointed to that job, bypassing the union's usual procedures for senior appointments. Um, and a big part of the reason for that may well have been the fact that he was on a final warning from the union uh, before she took over the job uh, for a string of complaints of misogyny and bullying uh, from people who, who had had to work with him, uh, including on one occasion, um, and I can't remember if I've put this in the public record as yet, but um, you know, telling a, a, an Asian woman in his team when she was feeling uh, poorly with period pains that uh, she could bleed all over the floor um, and uh, before he'd let her go home. So, you know, pretty horrendous stuff. And um, allegedly, and, uh, you know, it's a very firm allegation, um, Sharon wrote to uh, figures within the union trying to have them destroy that evidence, delete it from the, from the union's records, and when there was disciplinary action proposed against him, said that she couldn't accept the disciplinary action because it would have an impact on on her plans. Um, since then, she's come out and you know made comments on International Women's Day and so on about uh, standing up for women. But when it came to her husband's alleged behaviour, then um, you know there was a a, a pr pretty clear cover up, really. Um, in you know and. The receipts for that for that exist. When I challenged the union on that and asked them for comment, again, just smears in response, um, but never denied. Um, the Birmingham Conference Centre project has been a centrepiece of her um, tenure as a general secretary in that she has claimed to be the new broom coming in to sweep out all of the old uh, corruption and, and alleged dodgy dealings, although nothing's ever been quite confirmed as as having actually happened on that, and I don't know the details of that. Um, but that Birmingham Conference Centre project had a specific uh, project-specific convener, which is a job that's never existed before in the union. That project-specific convener was a very close ally of Sharon Graham, so she had her finger on the pulse through him on you know all through that project, and was on the exec that approved the project as well, as I understand it. Um, 
and yet uh, is now trying to distance herself from that and use it to, again, as far as I can tell, discredit uh, the old management and also, you know, nobble anybody that she thinks might be a threat to her in the next general secretary election. Um, it does look political. Uh, racism has been an issue. Uh, not as far as I'm aware from Sharon directly herself. However, one of her closest allies, Tony Seaman, um, was the subject of complaints about racist face. Um, I think they were Facebook posts, social media posts at least. Um, and the union wrote back to the branches that complained and agreed that what he had said was racist, but announced that they were going to take no action, uh, allegedly on the grounds that um, the posts hadn't been up for very long and he was now very sorry. Um, the same person, uh, you know, then had questions over his eligibility and his track record in other areas. Um, I understand some sexist comments on social media as well and, uh, on inappropriate posts and, uh, is, is, is or was being investigated, uh, by the executive because of that. So his position on the exec, uh, may be, um, may be in doubt because of that. Um, another of her allies um, made more uh, racist Facebook posts. And uh, when that was exposed and, and the news was broken by Squawk Box, uh, she then denied knowing him, even though they'd been pictured together and he was on her slate of candidates until he dropped out. Um, ineligible candidates um, stood in the election, or at least allegedly inel ineligible. Um, and according to union sources, the union contrived to find ways to allow them to stand by getting around the rules, um, even though according to the rules, they didn't have the necessary positions or qualifications in order to be able to stand in that election. Uh, but they were allies and therefore um, it appears that they were given a free pass. Despite that, and despite dark money spending on social media adverts, um, the, the source of which funding has never come out, but the uh, account that was paying for them, an anonymous account, disappeared from Facebook after it was uh, exposed on Squawk Box. Um, and despite the alleged use of the paid organisers and other paid officials to uh, try to um, swing the result of that executive election, um, her slate did badly. The left slate won a, a majority, uh, which they've claimed doesn't, <laughs> the, the Sharon's supporters have claimed isn't a majority, but it is and pretty much a clean sweep of the senior positions on the uh, Unite Executive Committee. Um, because of that, there there were, or after that at least, there were um, emails sent out that were smearing uh, the, uh, the left exec with innuendos about racism, about misogyny, about ableism and homophobia. Um, again, a very Labour right tactic. Um, One of her Scottish senior um, paid officials then uh, tried to organise the supporters she did have on the slate, which didn't include some of her biggest hitters because they lost out because the members were getting sick of things, I think, um, uh, and trying to rally them against the left in order to um, prevent the left making any decisions that she didn't like. Um, she's also, or her supporters have also tried to set up an alternative left to you know, give the impression of support for a way where it's not there. Um, other areas, again, a bit, you know, less seriously perhaps, but still pretty serious. Um, Sharon claimed that the, you know, that the Abellio pay, pay deal was an 18% deal. And that was the headline that she uh, used it under in order to, um, I don't know, bask in the reflected glory of that, I guess. Um in reality, the pay rise for most or many of the drivers at Abellio was as low as 4%, which was way below inflation. Uh, and their overtime rates were slashed in real terms as well. Um, but that, you know, 18% was um, used as the headline number in order to make um, Sharon and Unite look good, I guess. And, uh, you know, it, it seems to be a, a bit of a pattern. Um we then saw the situation in the West Bromwich, uh, West Bromwich East parliamentary uh, candidate selection where um, Unite 
um, nominated the previously mentioned Mr. Coyne, who was disgraced by a uh, breach of data protection laws of members um, and also for a, a foul smear campaign and uh, some links to the uh, EDL. Um, and he, uh, Unite nominated him to uh, be the candidate for that branch. Her sub, uh, supporters, or that constituency, sorry, her supporters have uh, claimed that she had nothing to do with that decision, but the idea that a former general secretary candidate with a track record as bad as Gerald Coyne's could be nominated without the uh, general secretary knowing about it or, uh, you know, uh, and probably approving it uh, strikes me as highly unlikely. Um, then we come to the recent bans on the uh, old Jeremy Corbyn film and Asa Wynn Stanley's very good and very forensic book uh, about weaponizing anti-Semitism. Um, she had uh, Gail Cartmel do the, the the assistant general secretary do the dirty work of informing branches that they were not allowed to show the film or defending why they'd been banned from showing the film, denying that it's a ban at all, even though they weren't allowed to to, to show it. Um, but Cartmel in her email made clear that she was responding on behalf of, of the general secretary. So it's, she hasn't managed to distance herself very far from the responsibility for that. Um, and of course, then the uh, campaign against anti-Semitism, the notorious right-wing group, um, boasted that they were the ones who had imposed on uh, the Unite management to ban the film and the book. And, uh, you know, that again was then subsequently denied, denied by Gail, Gail Cartmail, but the union has never asked um, or told the uh, campaign against anti-Semitism to withdraw that allegation if it's false. Um then just this week, we've got had Sharon standing in front of a big Ukrainian flag and, uh, you know, the popular way to describe anybody who dares to uh, resist the idea of, you know, unswerving support for Ukraine is to call them a Putin stooge. But Sharon standing there with a clenched fist raised in front of a Ukrainian flag and uh, welcoming the uh, union's apparent decision to uh, back the TUC motion supporting Ukraine has been challenged by some of the delegates who say they weren't asked um, and by members who say they weren't asked either. Uh, and of course, we have the situation where um, one of the first acts that uh, Zelensky uh, did after the uh, Russian invasion there was uh, to ban trade union activism and take away workers' rights, as well as attacking the left media and essentially seizing control of the media state. Um, Despite that, she's quite happy to be uh, pictured in front of a Ukrainian flag and demanding support from all unions uh, for the Ukrainian regime. Now, this does seem to be having a, a bit of a backlash. I've seen increasing numbers of uh, former supporters denounce or say they regret that they ever supported her, and uh, some have even resigned from their membership. And uh, coincidentally, without any idea that uh from me that this uh, that i was taking part in this meeting today i received an email from one former sharon supporter last night who said to me uh and asked not to be named but said at first like many people i was perplexed that you kept attacking one who seemed to be a victory for the left in unite especially against gerard Coyne. now it's clear my bewilderment was misplaced the outrageous order against all showings of old jeremy corbyn uh, the big light in United Premises is the opposite of what trade unions should be, uh, our society's biggest bullock for. Um, that the leadership of the biggest trade union donor to Labour should ban from its premises the documenting of wholesale trampling on the rights of Labour members, perhaps most of them trade union and indeed Unite members, is a disgrace that's rare in, the, in British history, for which I hope Graham pays dearly at the next Unite leader election. Likewise, the TUC resolutions on Ukraine, which Unite seems to support, uh, is also a shame. So, you know, people are waking up to it, whether they're waking up fast enough to uh, vote her out at the next General Secretary election remains to be seen. Whether, you know, whether too many Unite members leave in disgust and don't get the chance to vote her out, I don't know. Um, but, you know, my mind is clear and I've, I've retained my membership 
at least for the time being, in, intentionally for the so I can keep my vote for the next election round, because uh, you know I don't think she should be in that position, and we should be doing everything that we can to make sure that she, she's removed at the next opportunity. Thank you very much indeed, Steve. I think I I think I put the shock the shock face up about six times right. <laughs> during that speech. It's utter, utterly shocking, utterly shocking. I had no idea. Um, that things were this bad. Um, I've got three hands up already. Um, so I, I've got Larry, Tony and Phil and Phil Pope uh, already wanting to speak. So I'll go. Uh, how would you like to take this, Steve? Shall I give, shall I bring two people in and then you answer the questions? Or Yeah, know? that's probably, probably best. It'll uh, help okay. us move through it. Excellent. So I'm going to bring Larry and then Tony in. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, Steve, I, I've... Um... I've got to disagree with a, a, a lot of what you're saying, and uh, one of the one of the problems I have is that um, it's a shame that Steve has come and been invited to speak tonight, and a whole contribution was divisional and negative in that sense. And um, one of the things that, uh, and I can't say that I'm a, a, a supporter of bureaucracy in the trade unions because I come from a rank and file background and I've got to say that neither of uh, those candidates that were in the general secretary election, um, Beckett or Turner, were, were in my opinion rank and file orientated and certainly uh, Turner with the McCluskey's uh, support and uh, Beckett with um, Squawk Box um, support. Um, and uh, it seems to me that um, you're coming on here tonight, uh, are continuing that campaign of division within Unite, and Unite's membership have been falling over the years, long before uh, uh, Sharon Graham came into it, because of the lack of rank and file recruitment of shop stewards and recruitment of members within the general industries around. And... Uh, I say this because I've always been anti-autocratic, um, as general secretaries generally are, and uh, it's it's the uh, using of uh, by the United Left, i.e., basically the CP, um, in its opposition to Sharon Graham, all uh, faux left because it's they all have bureaucratic ambitions. Um, and an article that I read by Anne Field in, in the um, former, uh, which was indicating the former backers of the um, Alliance of Workers' Liberty, um, the demagogue that you mentioned in your contribution, I think, is divisional. And even, even to the, uh, the position that you last mentioned about him not... Um, her not being successful should she run again for a general secretary. Uh, one of the disputes that I was fully supportive of, and so was um, Sharon Graham, was the, the Keith Henderson dispute um, of the security at um, New Covent Garden um, because it had a rank and file organisation, a strike committee with Unite funding, which is a break from which was a break and a, a fresh air coming into the into Unite. And I think that uh, this contribution, I think, has been far too negative. Um, and for Anne Field to, to write, um, being used well, after, she, after she left Unite, obviously, um, uh, attack on the general secretary and Phil Dad and Bill Freeman and Mike Hicks, all CP members, had a big influence on the News International dispute. Not once did they call for a spreading of the strike. They they used adventurous activities and coupled with a a, a, a useless campaign of boycott. Instead of organising strike committees within the printing industry. They were more concerned about their prestige and election um, in the in the um, in their promotion within the bureau bureaucratic climb within Unite, and now they're all attacking Sharon Graham 
um, we're on these on these uh, on this position. Not once have you mentioned, um, uh, Steve, a way forward at rank and file le level in your contribution, other than to, other than to say don't support uh, Sharon Graham. I just find that wholly negative and not not worth um, uh, the platform that you've been given. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Larry. Um, I'm now bringing in Tony Greenstein, and then we'll go back to Steve to answer those questions. Right. Well, I hope I won't be wholly negative anyway. Uh, I mean, I, I only joined Unite relatively recently, about two, three years ago, after having been suspended for three years with loss of all membership rights by Unison for calling out a scab official who refused to support a worker. Stan Keeble, who went on to win an employment tribunal case. And for my sins, I've been made secretary of the Brighton 6246 branch. At the last elections, I mean, my reaction uh, to Sharon Graham's election, and I think uh, it was fairly typical, was thank God Gerard Coyne didn't win it. And therefore, although I voted for Steve Turner, I was pleased uh, that she had won. Uh, and she stood really on a a platform of militancy uh, and as far as I can see she has lived up to that to a greater or lesser extent for instance the Mungo strike which has just been won uh, I think is a fairly good example but it's also clear that Sharon politically uh, doesn't have a clue and because she describes herself as non-political she effectively is of the right uh, and I think we're seeing that increasingly with her support for imperialist and uh, indeed racist politics. I mean, over the Corbyn uh, film, uh, she took the word, not only the campaign against anti-Semitism, but I presume that she was leaned on by Starmer's office in order to ban it. I mean, quite outrageously. And the, I mean, I blogged on it and the number of lies we were told, oh, it's internal Labour Party affairs as if having given £2 million for the Labour Party a year, they, those affairs aren't germane to unite the union. But I think what she proves in many ways is the bankruptcy of just being militant without having any direction at all, because you can be as militant as you want. But if the political environment in which you're operating removes your rights or increasingly encroaches on your freedom to take action, then in the end that is quite futile. And that is why I think it's really disappointing that the left groups, I know the Socialist Party still supports her, I think the SWP uh, still supports her, because those groups are tied into greater and greater number of strikes without ever seeing the context in which industrial militancy takes place and the idea that a whole plethora of strikes by themselves, whether you win or whether you lose them, will generate a movement towards the left, uh, a movement towards socialism. Uh, I, I think is absolutely bankrupt. The question really is how we are going to remove Sharon Graham, because I, I see her as a figure of the right, and the fact that she's got into bed with Gary Smith over Ukraine, uh, over nuclear arms, the motion last year, uh, and so on, uh, to me says that she cannot remain and the left should not support her at the next general election. So I would like to see how the United Left, which, you know, I mean, uh, I, I don't know who, how it, what it does, how it operates. I've never, they've never contacted us, but I really do think there should be a growing movement. We should build a movement to get rid of her and to actually replace her with a genuine socialist candidate, be it Howard Beckett or someone else. But at the moment, uh, I think we're all at sea. I mean, my branch has protested endlessly about it. Uh, the other thing I think is that the left must take up democracy in Unite, because although though the left under McCluskey and before him other general secretaries uh, presided, the basic structures of Unite are extremely undemocratic. We we deal with Sarah Carpenter, who's the regional official for the southeast, but we can't remove her. We can't hold her accountable. These regional officials are the old regional barons, and they can either right, act on behalf of a left leadership or a right-wing leadership. But there needs to be democracy throughout the union. Uh, going back to, I mean, the old AUEW structure where all officials were elected, 
is an extremely good one. I mean, the AUEW dynamic has uh, united, if you like, with the old TNG to form or uh, to form uh, unite. So I think we need to also have a political perspective as to how we change the union in order that the right, if it gains control, cannot simply impose its will uh, through a command structure via its regional officials. Uh, thank you. That's all. Thank you very much, Tony. I think the last point you made is very, very important indeed. I'm going to go back. I've got Phil Pope and John Gibson and Ian, but I'm going to go back to Steve now and then take uh, take uh, Phil and John. Over to you, Steve. Uh, thanks, Carol. Uh, well, I'll do them in reverse order because I think Tony's was easiest. I'm not sure if there's a question in there, but I pretty much agreed uh, with everything he'd said. I, you know, I wish that uh, Sharon Graham had lived up to uh, what she promised she was going to do in, uh, you know, in, in terms of militancy, in terms of all sorts of things. Um, however, you know, and, and, you know, moving on to Larry, because the two things kind of got together. I mean, dot all back, Larry, say what you really think. <laughs> but, um, you know, at least you didn't throw in the sexist uh, thing, and uh, you know, which, which I've been accused of before every time you scrutinise a woman. Um, and I will say, you know, my question on this you know when manuel cortez was exposed as an alleged you know sexual serial sexual harasser within tssa i was that i was the first one that was reporting that i was the first one scrutinizing it. it was the first you know most of the new information that came out came out through me because you know and manuel was a figure of the left he was a supporter of jeremy corbyn at the time when he was you know when corbyn was leading the labor party not somebody you would necessarily want to see taken down all other things being equal but i will not sit by and cannot for you know my own moral and professional kind of standards stand by if i find out that somebody is doing something you know grotesque which they shouldn't be doing and you know so i played as much of a role in that tssa kind of thing breaking as anybody apart from the actual whistleblowers i think um in terms of you know sharing that information making sure people were aware of what was going on uh, and when the union tried to kind of circle the wagons and cover it up a bit, you know, I exposed that as well. So, you know, if Sharon Graham was doing the job and if she was as upright as she claims to be, and, so, you know, even if she wasn't claiming to be upright, you know, and sort of whiter than white, for want of a better phrase, cleaner, you know, clean as a whistle on the issue, say, like with women and things like that, you know, then I might be less tempted to go into it. Probably not. But, you know, the fact is, if you, I don't care who is running Unite, if they turn out to have been covering up, and as I say, they, they are, it is allegedly, but, you know, the, the receipts exist. Um, harassment, bullying, misogyny, promoting a husband into a job, you know, despite all that, trying to have evidence destroyed um, before she became the general secretary and presumably, although I don't know, um, you know, that has been removed now that she is the general secretary, um, then I will expose that every single time. And if people say that's divisive, then frankly, I don't care because that's the same argument that people use when they say, oh, but you can't attack Keir Starmer because, you know, that's playing into the hands of the Tories. Well, no, he's playing in the hands of the Tories by being who he is and doing what he does and exposing that is the least service that we can possibly do, particularly me as a journalist for the public to put on record what's actually going on so that people are aware, because if they're not aware, how can they possibly make an informed decision? And if people are prepared to continue back in Sharon, if those things are true, and again, you know, they have never denied it, then, uh, you know, they need to have a, a word with themselves and have a think about, who they're supporting because if they're prepared to support somebody who has done those things and you know not just those but the you know they're targeting the brendan ogle when he was just recovered from cancer the uh you know the attacks on the uh corbyn film and the win stanley book etc etc the blind eye to racism among candidates if they were her allies and so on there is you know i can't excuse that on behalf of anybody who's going to still stick up for it and if you're going to attack me for um, exposing those things, then I think you you need to have a rethink of priorities. Thank you very much, Steve. I'm going to bring in Phil and then John Gibson. Phil Pope and then John Gibson. Phil. Hi, thanks, Karen. Yeah, so um, 
I do worry a bit that a lot of people talk as if it's the general secretary's job to dictate what union policy is. Like that's not the sort of union I want to be a member of. Um, I mean, maybe it is like that sometimes, but it certainly shouldn't be. Um, now, like a few of these issues, like if we take, for example, the disaffiliation from Labour Party. Um, when Sharon stood, she was criticised um, for wanting to disaffiliate because it meant that um, like United have less influence in the Labour Party. Now she's getting criticised because she's not arguing for disaffiliation hard enough. But the fact is, there was a motion to union conference uh, the delegates didn't back disaffiliation. So where would, where's the grounds for Sharon to take any other policy than that? From what I know of her, she's actually on the left of the national executive and is more favourable to disaffiliation than a lot of the, the executive members. Um, got another issue, the war in Ukraine. Um, the national executive passed a unanimous emotion, motion condemning the invasion. I'd like it to be more left wing, but where's the grounds for Sharon to start some massive anti-war campaign? There isn't one. If you ask Unite members, like members of the public, uh, they will support Ukraine. I, I wish more people saw what was really going on and more were more left wing. But where's the basis for the union to start a massive anti-war left wing campaign about it? There's no political basis for us to do it. Sharon would be going out on a complete limb. Um, again, the anti-Semitism issue. I wish the union would had a better left-wing stance on it. But mo most Labour Party members, most Unite members who are affiliated to the Labour Party, they voted for Keir Starmer rather than Jeremy Corbyn. I wish that wasn't the case, but that is the world we're living in. Like A lot of people would not want the union to be going back into the anti-Semitism issue because they were sick of it. And that's why, that's part of the reason why Starmer won the leadership. I wish that wasn't the case. But again, where's the political basis for Sharon, even if she did think that, to be saying it? Like you can't, the General Secretary can't make up policy and ignore what the membership and the delegates and the executive think. Um, and um, like the union isn't as democratic as it should be, but I don't think things were better when McCluskey was um, in charge. Um, there's massive corruption, massive issues with sexism and racism in the union. The union's far too close to industry, like on loads of issues. And um, it was totally bureaucratic, like when we had all the uh, nominations for MPs and um, in Bristol for the city mayor. McCluskey signed the fucking Unite um, the Unite nomination form in favour of the person we were trying to get rid of in Bristol. He didn't ask any of the members how to cast the votes. So I mean, so I mean, my my point is having a go at Sharon Graham is not addressing any of these deep seated issues in the union about democracy, and is failing to see that. The membership aren't as left wing as we'd like them to be. We've got to win a political argument on all these issues and we've got to change how the union works. Having a go at Sharon fails to address any of that and we'll just uh, replace her with someone else we can moan about who might be better, might be might be a lot worse. Like my impression of Sharon is she is generally on the left on most of this um, and she's not part of the bureaucracy which has dominated the union for qu quite a long time um which i think steve turner really was and mccluskey was um like apart from talking left i don't really see mccluskey did much to make the union better so i mean it's too early to tell whether we're gonna change the union under sharon's leadership um and it'll be interesting to see when Starmer is prime minister, as it's overwhelmingly likely will be, what she does then. And um, and my last point was, can you see any other trade union leaders being any more critical of Starmer, any more radical? Even in the RMT, the CWU, the RMT, 
None of them want to piss off the next prime minister by criticising him because they all work the same way of trying to negotiate from the top rather than mobilise at the bottom. And that's that's the big problem, like not, not how bad the current leaders are. All right, thanks. Thank you very much, Phil. Um, yeah, very good points made there. I'm going to bring in John Gibson now, and then go back to um, then go back to Steve. Okay. Thanks, Carol, and uh, thanks, Steve, for coming along and um, giving us your your views. Um, obviously, I've looked and followed your commentary on the Graham leadership. Um, I'm a member of the CWU myself. So I'm not directly involved in what goes on in Unite. What, what has disappointed me over the last few months has been that many Unite members backed Graham because she, she was presenting as, a, as an independent left leadership that, that wasn't tied up with the internal machinations of the Labour Party. But what she's done in, in her position of General Secretary is she's got tied up in those machinations in the Labour Party, not backing the, 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 the needs of the workers in the country, but backing Starmer. Backing Starmer on, 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 the, um, uh, anti, on, on the allegations of anti-Semitism towards people on the left, totally unfounded, a scam as it's widely known now. She's not backed, uh, she, she's barred the Jeremy Corbyn film from being shown, a film that was very well made by platform films. That should have been, if she was going to take an independent view, stepping back from the political arena, she shouldn't have interfered with, with the ability of local branches to show that film. It seems to me that you can't have your cake and eat it. You can't say, well, I'm going to be independent and I'm not going to interfere in the Labour Party, and then and then side with the Labour Party leadership against what was millions of Labour Party members and many, many Unite members who supported what, what, what the Jeremy Corbyn project offered for the working class. It, offered, it, it secured the biggest result for Labour this century under Jeremy Corbyn and the popular policies that, that would have meant uh, for at uh, last a change in direction for the government instead of continuing the, the destruction of working class organisations that had been led by Thatcher and every prime minister since. So, for, uh, so I, for one, wish to say thank you, Steve, for your coverage. Thank you for coming on here tonight uh, and sharing with us many of the stories that you've covered and keep up the good work, comrade. And to those who to those who push back against Sharon uh, against what Steve is being saying and doing, ask yourselves: Do you want nepotism within the trade union movement? Do you want it to be more democratic and more accountable? And if a, and if a leader is elected and they don't become more democratic and accountable, then surely they're the wrong leader. I love to see women elected to positions of office. And I had a great hope that Sharon Graham would be an improvement. But uh, as at the time, I wanted um, um, the other chap um, to be elected and, and uh, he wasn't, Howard Beckett. And uh, that, that I think now is, is proven to be a shame. Thank you, Carol. Thank you very much, John. Um, okay, I'm going back to Steve now to um, come back with some remarks on those comments and questions. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, thank you, John, um, for that. It's very kind. On Phil's points, um, I mean, I'll try and remember them all. I haven't had a chance to make the notes uh, to make sure I cover every one. But, I mean, I haven't criticised Sharon Graham for not disaffiliating from Labour. Um, I think, you know, I suspect that she exercised a lot of influence um, to make sure that that vote... Um, was you know was defeated at the uh, that motion was defeated at the conference. Um, I have criticised her for increasing spending, uh, increasing funding to the Labour Party, which didn't have to be done. Um, but I haven't criticised her for not disaffiliating because that's that's a, a union decision. Um, however, she has you know 
repeatedly sided with Keir Starmer, as far as I can tell, while maintaining a kind of facade of warnings and you know demands that he's got to do better and this kind of thing, which are pretty meaningless, really, when you're not actually exerting the influence that you should be influencing. You know, I think that uh, the problem with not disaffiliating is that it doesn't free Unite up then to become a force for good uh, in anything. If you're back in Labour, you're eating, you know you are back in the Tories essentially. Now that's an issue across the union movement by and large, but Phil, you know, suggested that there aren't any union members who are behaving any differently. Um, Ian Hodson from uh, the Bakers and the whole Bakers disaffiliated uh, from the union uh, from the Labour Party because of the way that they were behaving. Um, the RMT, I think he mentioned. Well, you know, the RMT has certainly not been anything like as uh, cosy and supportive uh, with Keir Starmer as uh, as i've seen sharon be so far and uh you know i think there are any number of unions that are doing considerably better better even if they're very far away from perfect i mean i'm also as well as a unite member i'm a member of the cwu and uh you know they've disappointed me in some ways um on it but you know that is uh it's it's almost been a side issue because there haven't been these other things at least that i'm aware of going on behind the scenes anybody wants to tip me off about things going on there then i'll look at that just as closely um but you know the the issues you know if we again i come back to this point you know i think phil raised the issue that keir starman got voted in as the labor leader well he did but he got voted in as the labor leader by misleading and lying at every turn and getting away with it until it was too late to do anything about it um do we want that to happen in unite do we want the unite general secretary to be up to things behind the scenes that we would condemn and then uh not know about it is that better is it better to have the wool pulled over our eyes and remain in ignorance and we just let people get on with it as they want while they're all you know potentially making backroom deals with people that we vehemently oppose so you know i'm not uh you know i'm not here to advocate a, a particular you know new leader for uh unite or anything like that in the future I just don't think that Sharon Graham should be the person that's anywhere near it because personally, I, uh, you know, from what I've found out, I, I find it very hard to stomach that. Thank you very much, Steve. Um, I've got Ian and John. I knew it was bad. I didn't know it was quite this bad, at least not till recently. I think it was when they started um, banning the film that that I got really uh, suspicious. Um, I always thought uh, her... Uh, Workers Not Westminster stuff was uh, was classic talking left, acting right. Um, that when she didn't go to conference a couple of years ago when it was still on a knife edge and if Unison had uh, uh, followed the position of their just then elected uh, left NEC, um, Starmer would have lost on a lot of things. Um, uh, she didn't turn up uh, because she had found some picket uh, somewhere in the country to have her picture taken on and said that was more important. So so that really showed quite graphically how her position was demagogic, talking left in order to act right, uh, leaving politics to the politicians. How radical is that? Uh, not, But uh, this has gone further now. I wouldn't fault her for not affiliating. I think that's a red herring. I think um, uh, not disaffiliating. I think that... Uh, not just because it was a conference decision, though she did, has to be said, argue for that position. She's not just robotically following the workers' um, mandate after it. Uh, I think if they were to be in the party and actually try and exercise influence, and if that was impossible organically lead to a split, that might be a better strategy. The trouble is SARS seems to be at first staying and not fighting, and now staying and fighting for the other side, for Starmer. And uh, although that near miss in 2021, I was aware that it wouldn't necessarily come back right away in the party, even if the unions got themselves further over the line come the next conference because of the way these decisions have now been locked in with the rule changes that he got through. I didn't see things being thrown back so much in the union. Unison we can talk about another time. But in, in Unite, it's... Uh, it's really depressing. I've got a couple of specific questions um, about the Socialist Party. I saw that um, some of their literature going into the last conference, they were 
putting themselves forward as supporters of Sharon Graham, talking about her slate as the left slate and the other slate as the right at that time. It doesn't seem to fit very um, conveniently with their usual obsessive promotion of disaffiliation and building a new party. So I don't know if they've changed their position since or if they're just living with that contradiction. Um, I don't know about the SWP at all, uh, but um, but uh, in terms of... Uh, sorry, I've written a few things in the chat and I'm just uh, trying to, to take the lead from the questions I've already asked there. Um, Ian, I don't want to interrupt you, but we have quite a few hands up. Yeah, still. yeah, I know. Sorry. I've, I've also put in the chat that Jackie Walker um, said, I saw this on Twitter just last night, that she's leaving uh, Unite because of its funding of the witch hunt. I don't agree with that tactically. I'm worried it might catch on. But I thought it was worth bringing up and seeing if, if you've noticed um, noticed any, any further a situation like that. I don't know if John Dunn, who is a big supporter of Sharon and who I generally like for similar reasons to why I like Howard Beckett to slashing attacks on Starmer, if he's become disillusioned with Sharon yet. Um, I mean, you've been very critical of Steve Turner as well. And I think that was what I was trying to, to say about with the Socialist Party a minute ago, that um, they say the old um, United Left are effectively acting like a right and I've seen not from them, but from others, people saying that they've been doing bad things to undermine Sharon deliberately. Um, and maybe pointing out, blaming some of the things that we've been talking about tonight on her enemies. Now, I think if that were true, she could go over their heads and say so. In fact, her ego might be our friend in, in that case. And I, I haven't heard anything like that. In fact, quite the opposite. But just to ask you about that, I do think of Steve Turner had got in because he, even though he was engaging with Starmer more softly, softly than, than Howard, who has supported, um, I could see the logic of the two of them running together. He might have by now have got uh, sick of engaging with Starmer softly, softly. Um, but Sorry, I don't know. I'm Do you think it's just the outworking of, of Sharon's apolyticism or is she actually um, a, a complete right wing liar in your view, I suppose, as well? Sorry. Okay, thank you, Ian. Um, I've I've got two 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 women who want to come in here, so I'm going to bring those in now. Jay Robinson, we'd like to hear from oh, you now, please. Okay. Hi. Um, I'm on the national forum as a community member, and um, how it was put to us was that the decision that was made about the banning of the film was that that is all now in the past and that we've got to think of the here and now and move forward. And that was the official position put to us. We've actually got Mary, who's the political officer, coming back again on the 20th, 28th um, to give us some more information about the banning of the film. We actually showed it in Birmingham as a community branch. We weren't underhanded about it as far as our region was concerned and ended up raising £274, which we made a big fuss about. And we put, we've donated this in line with Unite policies to the Strike Solidarity Group in Birmingham. Oh, thank you, Jay. Um, I've got Sarah okay. King. I'm going to bring Sarah King in now to, to give her contribution. Carol, thanks everybody. Yeah, no, I was just saying that I'm, uh, so I am a Unite member, but I don't live in the UK, so I'm not particularly kind of active. Um, I used to work for the GMB, um, but that was a very long time ago. I have to say, like others have said, I'm also very surprised, not to say, sh you know, and also shocked um, about what I've been hearing. Um, I didn't vote for Sharon Graham um, in the elections, though I have to say again, I think like others um, at the time, I thought, well, OK, it could have been a lot worse. Um, but OK, we are where we are. And I think part of the discussion is in terms of, you know, next steps and things like that. I mean, if, if, if everything that, you know, Steve has sort of uh, outlined is true, I think it, it, it is absolutely appalling, um, you know, However, you know, I have to say as well that, you know, we, we also know that um, 
you know, there are also issues when it comes to issues like racism and sexism, United is not unique. Um, so, you know, you have these issues as well in the other unions, the GMB, there was very high profile um, case in terms of sexism. Um, and the then general secretary had to step down, there was an inquiry and all the rest of it. Um, I mean, in terms of the politics of it, I think clearly in terms of trade unionists, you know, our first uh, priority is defending the rights of our members, working people. Um, and we do that in the workplaces. Um, when necessary, we take strike action, industrial action. Um, and of course, there's a political element to that. The Labour Party, you know, I don't, you know, I'm not going to preach to anybody here. We all know the origins um, of the Labour Party. Um, I actually live um, you know, for example, in Belgium, we have three main trade union confederations, and each of them has links with different political parties going from the left um, to let's well, I won't I won't say the right necessarily, but let's say liberals. Um, so I think you know, I don't want to say anything in terms of, you know, whether Sharon Graham is a star, you know, starmerite or not. I mean, by what's been said, it sounds like she may well be. Um, but I think the issue is not so much that it's about, you know, how do we make sure that, you know, the unions are putting forward um, policies um, that are defending workers' rights and whether it's the Labour Party or the Conservatives, or whatever, I think this is what the main point of attack should be. I mean, you know, I, I have to say that looking at what's been happening in the TUC recently, with, under the leadership of Paul Novak, the TUC has been coming out, in my view, um, a lot more clearly now, raising, you know, these really fundamental issues in terms of what's happening to, you know, the right to strike and things like that. Um, and so maybe, I mean, you know, as I said, uh, not to get into the issues of, you know, yeah, Sharon Graham per se, um, but I think this is definitely something that as union members, we should be putting pressure on our leadership um, to actually being more vocal on these sorts of things. And then as a result, it then means that, you know, they will have to come out and say, you know, where they stand on, for example, the fact that, you know, the Labour Party has said that they're now going back on this idea that we should get rid of, um, you know, the sort of the two, two tier, um, you know, have basically, you know, equal rights for all. Um, so anyway, just a, you know, a few thoughts to put to add to the conversation. Thanks. Thank you very much, Sarah. Thank you. I'm going to go back to Steve now. I've still got two people who want to speak. So I'm going to go back to Steve now to uh, to respond to those contributions. Uh, sure. Well, going back to Ian's, um, the question that I, I remember out of it was, or sort of main point that, that struck me was the um Unite um, regimes uh, claim that you know it's it's all in the past and we need to move on from it now. I mean, Craig, you'd never put, you'd never prosecute anybody for any crime or sin or anything else that ever happened if uh, if you took that attitude because it you know everything's in the past if it's happened already, and if you don't educate yourself about how the uh, whole um, attempts to make the UK a more uh, just place was sabotaged by people with. Uh, their own agendas and vested interests and political careers, et cetera, et cetera. Then, you know, those who don't learn from history, et cetera, you know, as the saying goes, are uh, doomed to repeat it and they're going to get conned again. Um, so, you know, I, I, I have heard that they've said that, but it, it's it's absolute nonsense that, you know, and, and it's absolute nonsense that the union should see fit to stop its members from discussing something, whether or not they think it's immediately relevant. Um, you know, we're supposed to be a country that still has freedom of speech, uh, though that's debatable. Um, I saw, by the way, that Phil dropped in a link here for Sharon saying that Jeremy Corbyn should be allowed to uh, stand as a Labour candidate. And that's a strange position for a star, right? Well, it's it's a, you know, it's a free hit, basically. So she, Sharon, like all the rest of us, knows full well that they're never going to let Jeremy stand as a Labour candidate again. And so you've got no, you know, you're not losing anything. You're getting a bit of kudos maybe by saying, that but you, you know there's no sign that she's actually pushed for it uh or you know demanded that he be allowed in if if unite is going to continue giving its money to the labor party so you know there there's talk and anyone can talk a good fight um but the uh you know the action side tells more truth i think um i agree with phil's comment there that uh, there's more than one venue for defending workers rights i think you know there is a major issue and I can't remember if this came up as a question in the last uh, couple of contributions, but 
you know, the anti-protest laws, the spike ops laws that give, you know, we all know that um, left organizations generally and unions to a great extent were uh, infiltrated and spied on by the police. Um, Keir Starmer wants to give everybody, uh, you know, involved in that kind of endeavor against the working class a free pass for any criminal acts that they can't uh, commit in the process of it. So, you know, I, I think the lines are pretty clear. You've got to take a side. And if you don't take a side, you're effectively taking the wrong side. So, um, Sarah, I'm sorry, uh, can can you just remind me if you're still there, what uh, what your question was coming out of it? Because I meant to get onto that and then it slipped my mind. But, um, sure. yeah, I think we have to, uh, yeah, go ahead. No, sorry. I mean, to be honest, yeah, there wasn't necessarily a specific question in it, but I was just saying that, you know, I think uh, the, the issue is about, you know, getting our trade, how we get the unions to really focus on defending the interests of workers, because, I mean, through that, then they then have to take a stand, whether it's the Labour Party or the Conservatives or whoever. It should, I mean, yes, we need to, you know, have strong left, but whoever is in government, the unions have to be defending workers' rights. Yeah, and I mean, I agree, and I think you know, I'm 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 a journalist, so I'm not proposing that uh, I've got the answers for every future eventuality. But I think the key thing is that we need to, you know, we need to be aware because the the pattern that we've all seen too often is that somebody gets in a, into a union leadership position and they talk the talk, but then when it comes to actually resisting what the establishment is doing to us, then uh, they tend to side with that. And, uh, you know, if if that kind of behavior and the other kind of skeletons in the closet of, it, of union leaders are not examined, then we're never going to get people in those positions who will actually resist what the powers that be want to do uh, to the working class. And things are just going to continue to go downhill. Thank you very much, Steve. I've got John um, and Tony and Paul and Peter. I'm going to bring them one after the other because there's quite a few. They won't want to speak. So if you don't mind, I'm going to bring them one after the other. There'll be four people. And then if we can go back to you for your concluding remarks. Sure. Thanks, Carol. Um, I think we missed a trick in the way that we actually entitled this meeting. Um which has produced a discussion that I, for one, find very unsatisfactory, which is all about individuals um, and whether this personality or that personality would make a, a better leader, uh, what uh, X's record is against Y's record. Um, and I think the, the under... For me, the, a, a better discussion would have been if we'd said something like looking at the experience of Unite since Sharon Graham uh, took over the leadership, what does that say about the strengths and weaknesses of trade unions as they're now con constituted and the way in which how should trade unions be acting? Um, and what would we do as Republican socialists to actually work more effectively within the labor movement, meaning the unions? Because I see no future in working within the Labour Party. Um, so, you know, I, I think that what Larry said about um, the importance of building rank and file structures, which is something the SWP certainly used to support. Uh, I don't know whether it does anymore, but um, I think that's really important because as Republican socialists, we're all about a bottom-up uh, policy, a bottom-up approach to democracy and at the moment no trade union has a democratic structure which which forces us into this kind of fairly arid discussion about individual leaders and replacing them with better leaders now you know if you give a be a better person a more 
politically aware person the same job within the same structure which is not democratic um, and which is limited to industrial militancy rather than taking on the political, the politics of it all, um, then eventually they're going to become like the leaders which have gone before. And, you know, it, it's in the nature, there are certain things which are in the nature of trade unionism. And I think the experience of the 60s and the 70s, for those of us who were around then, and I was, um, is that milit union militancy on its own, which doesn't have a political dimension, does not move the working class forward. It comes up against buffers. It, unions are by nature defensive organisations, started off defending workers against capitalists and the changes which capitalists wanted to make won rights against capitalists. Nowadays, uni unions' greatest opponent is the state. Now, what does that say about the new conditions in which trade unions are operating? And how should unions operate differently as a result of that? Um, now, the good things which I've heard um, from, from all, all angles on this tonight, but there have been far few in, in between um, because of the nature of the title of the discussion. And I think we need a, a fresh discussion or another discussion which actually looks at the structure and politics of trade unions, the change in who is the opponent for trade, uh, trade unions, and what are the advantages and disadvantages of the current structures, and are the current structures democratic? That's all. Thank you very much, John. Yes, some very good points raised there. Um, Tony has already spoken, but he has had his hand up for a long time. So, uh, Tony, I'm bringing you in now. Right, hi. In a sense, this discussion has gone round and round. I mean, uh, when I spoke, I made it clear that it wasn't enough to get someone elected who was on the left, but you need a revolution in terms of the structures and the democratisation of Unites, and I stand by that. I mentioned, for example, the election of officials. That is absolutely crucial. So uh, I, I'm not saying that uh, Sharon Graham is the font of all evil, and if we only replace her, then everything would be okay. Clearly, that isn't the case. But the British Labour movement has been hobbled ever since its inception by the belief that militancy alone will solve everything. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is clearly not the case, because however militant you are, the, the government will change the political environment in order that you are no longer able to be militant. For example, taking away the right to strike by service agreements and so on, which is what the present government are doing with the support of Starmer. Bear in mind that Starmer, no, no sooner he made pledges to Unite's conference, then retracted them, as we saw at the London Labour Conference. So this idea that Sharon Graham is somehow better than anyone else simply doesn't stand up. Now, of course, putting a left candidate into place by themselves or is not sufficient. Uh, and Phil, uh, I mean, and others have mentioned uh, McCluskey, but if you look back for all his sins, and he had a number of sins, uh, Len McCluskey, he was a supporter of Jeremy Corbyn. He did do his best to actually get Corbyn reinstated as a... Uh, uh, Yet to get the whip reinstated, but of course Starmer uh, double-crossed him. Len McCluskey also uh, did uh, attack the anti-Semitism campaign. He called it mu mood music. He did make himself prominent as a supporter, a Jewish voice for Labour. He didn't go along with the Zionist campaign. Look at Sharon Graham. She's taken her advice and entered into correspondence, because there's been no denial, with a campaign against anti-Semitism. The most right-wing 
Zionist organization there is. It's clearly was set up by Israel's Ministry of Strategic Affairs. It devotes its life to defaming people as anti-Semites. I mean, that's all it does. Uh, and the fact that uh, Sharon Graham and them got on like a house on fire, I, I, I think should speak volumes. Imperialism is the Achilles heel of the British Labour movement, because what imperialism does, it says that you ally with your own ruling class abroad, even though you may have quarrels uh, at home. I mean, Lenin said that the weakness of the Labour movement was that it, it, it uh, and British trade unions, was that they dined from the table of imperialism. They accepted the crumbs from the table. And that is clearly the case. Now, I mean, McCluskey made mistakes. I mean, he accepted Corbyn's advice on open selection. I think that was a key critical mistake, without a doubt. But he didn't get into bed with Corbyn's uh, critics, whereas Sharon Graham politically is at home with Starmer. Uh, 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 and you cannot find a more right-wing Labour leader of the Labour Party uh, than Keir Starmer, who, who's accepted the Tory agenda on virtually every single issue. To actually do that, I think, is outrageous. I mean, she is really no different from Gerard Coyne politically, which is probably why she didn't say anything about the nomination of Coyne uh, for a West Mid Midlands seat. I think it was West Bromwich East. But uh, I stand Can I ask you to, to wrap it up now, please? I've still got three people. Yeah, yeah, uh, Can I ask the next people that come on? I'm going to time you. Can you please keep it to two minutes? But not in a job which is generally unionizable, and that's why I'm in community in my local branch. Accept me um and want me there however um there has been some interference to negative effect from one of the uh, sort of uh, regional full-timers which pointed me absolutely nowhere if i'd followed their advice i wouldn't have a branch at all to belong to um i am concerned about a general level of sniping that has been going on within Unite structures. Uh, we, I think, as a block, did end up voting for Sharon Graham. And I share a lot of what John Tummum actually has said. I really share many of the points that he made. I think there are two more outstanding issues that she does need to answer. One is the anti Semitism thing and the whole question of the Corbyn film. Now, that is absolutely outrageous and cannot be allowed to, allowed to stand. And thanks, is it Jai, for, for telling us what the official response was on that, that we have to move on and forget the past because it's the past. They need to get a far better account than that. The other one is the question of the war in Ukraine, which has divided a lot of the left. I mean, I find myself... Uh, wondering at the number of, of Stalinists who come out of the woodwork and uh, defend the, the completely non-progressive nature of, of Russia's attack when Putin is wanting nothing more progressive than to recreate um, a, a, almost a, 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 greater, uh, a greater Slav empire, uh, some, some dream from the past. Um, so there are real issues there in relation to which side we 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 take, notwithstanding the meddling of NATO, which actually, you know, NATO <laughs> didn't engineer this and actually found itself caught on the hop. So, you know, we need to, we we really need to be quite careful. There is a question of the unprovoked attack upon a neighbouring state which was a smaller state. And I think, you know, the right of nations to self-determination is really important here. Thank you very much, Mike. Yes, if you can make it really, really short, please, Peter. Um, well, I've been involved in uh, United Community for about the last six or seven years. And um, that's been quite interesting. It's been useful locally in Birmingham in terms of building coalitions. And we very much were a coalition of the left in momentum. Um, we set up the Unite Community branch to sort of have that double facet of being a Labour Party left and a trade union left. We thought that Unite 
and I think it is still um, a left-wing union that we could um, try and have an influence within and try and build up support within. Um, so that's what we've been doing in Birmingham with Birmingham United Community. Um, I think um, in terms of Sharon Graham, I think it's clear, as Tony said, really, you know, and it's so common that people get elected and then they start to slide. They start to slide back towards the establishment. And there's a big pressure for the trade unions to go back into the fold with the Labour Party, even though it's the Starmer is the leader. That's their tradition. You know, that's their base is to um, go along. And isn't it wasn't the line um, wait for the next Labour Party government? I mean, now we're waiting for the next Labour Party government, but we know it's going to be Starmer and it's going to be crap. But that's still the way that trade unions operate, uh, still within that. And I think the longer term um, aim that we should be looking for, I mean, our branch has passed a resolution by um, 12 votes to two that we should disaffiliate from the Labour Party. And I think a long term project is going to be to win Unite and other unions in order to win them to splitting from the Labour Party in order to form a real workers' party. And I think that's going to take years, but that's really what we should be focusing on. And that's maybe what we can agree on. I didn't agree with the last speaker <coughs> at all in terms of Ukraine, but um, perhaps that's what we can agree on, is that we need to build a rank and file left that actually takes uh, Unite um, out of the orbit of the Labour Party. Thank you very much, Peter. I'm glad we did hear you speak. Um, I'm going to go back to Steve now to make give his concluding remarks. Um, John, and I think it was um, Mike, was sort of making the point about um, being a bit dissatisfied that it was, it was about an individualist discussion or the or about individuals gener generally. I think the issue is that as things stand at the moment, individuals have a lot of influence and individuals have, play, you know, have a lot of control and power and stuff. And I'd liken it probably a little bit to, you know, those who support PR would, you know, they would love to have a political representation that isn't the two party system, et cetera, but we have the two party system. So people who want that have to, at some point, find out, figure out a way of getting the two parties in the two party system to, uh, to support PR if things are ever going to change uh, that or a revolution. Um, similarly, you know, it, it would be much better if unions were genuinely democratic. But while you've got people at the top of the union who aren't really interested uh, in making unions generally genuinely democratic, that's always going to be very difficult to change. So you have to address the issues of um, of the individuals occupying roles, because if you don't, then people aren't aware they're going to be able to continue to occupy those roles and act as a roadblock to to the things that need to. Uh, need to happen and that links in with the kind of you know if you've got an ambition for the union to be bottom up you've got to deal you know get get the right people at the top in the first place so they're never going to empower them we've heard, we've seen how Keir Starmer talks about empowering the regions talks about empowering the members talks about empowering everybody but when it comes down to his actual actions he's he's all about taking power away from them so you know the, 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 what do you do if you're not going to deal with the people that are not living up to what they maybe got in on um Paul, I think it was, uh, he said about me saying if on stuff. Well, that's genuinely, you know, it's generally advised to say if about stuff because, you know, it's less likely to get sued by people who may be interested in in burning some money on trying to pursue a lawsuit that um, even though it's all true and they can't win it. Um, I stand by every single thing I've, re I've reported on Sharon Graham. And I will remind everybody listening that at no point, well, I'll say first off, actually, Squawk Box is a regulated publication. So anybody who wanted to make a complaint about stuff can do so. If Sharon wanted to make a complaint about stuff, she could. Um, her union could easily say, you know, no, it's not true. Those, you know, the, a denial has never come about any of this stuff. Everything I've put to them, I've had insults back, but I've never had a denial. I've never even had a relevant and meaningful comment. I stand by what I've written. Everything is researched and, uh, you know, is is put out there in good faith. And if I get something wrong, then I retract it and publish a correction. So, you know, I've never had to do that about anything 
about what I've talked about today. And, uh, you know, there is very likely a reason for that. Um, Mike, yeah, I'll just add, I, you know, I partially agree with Mike on Ukraine. I would question whether you could say that the Russian invasion was unprovoked, because I think that there is a genuine argument to be had that uh, NATO's fairly relentless expansion towards the Russian border is a provocation. Um, and Ukraine wanting to join there would be seen in Russia as a provocation, whatever you think about it, either way. Um, I have no particular time for either of those national leaders. I think that they're they're all serving their own agendas, just like they are in this country. Um, you know, they're in it for, for what suits them and not necessarily for the good of the people. Um, Peter, you mentioned pressure to go along. I think that's absolutely correct. I think there's enormous pressure to go along, which makes it all the more important to get people in there who have the backbone and integrity to resist that pressure and refuse to go along if we're ever going to have any help of change in anything. Otherwise, I just think, you know, why bother with any of it? Because it's always going to be the same kind of people who are occupying every position. Did I cover anything or was there anybody that I missed? I think, uh, yes, you've done, you've done a very, I think you've done a very good job there, Steve. Um, I think what's coming across very strongly, though, in all the discussion is that we need to change the unions. They are not democratic. We need to change the structures of the unions be and, and because the members must be sovereign, um, not the bureaucracy. They are, they are paid officers. It is the members who should have the final say on everything. I think that's coming across really, really strongly. So I just want to say thank you so much, Steve, for being here tonight and for giving us so much of your time. You've obviously generated a very good, what I consider a very good discussion. Mm. You know, we've had we've had pros and cons from different people, which has been marvellous. Um, but it was your initial uh, presentation that, that, that uh, warranted all of those. So thank you very much for coming and for staying so long.